Thomas here. I want to share with you a couple things. I've written this out. I just want to share this with you. A particular vision that uh, George Washington had. America's first president. America's first president saw a prophetic vision. The vision is recorded by several people, but it goes on like this. One day at Valley Forge, I remember it well, the chilly winds whistled through the leafless trees. And though the sky was cloudless and the sun shone brightly, he, George Washington, remained in his quarters nearly all afternoon alone. When he came out, I noticed his face was a shade paler than usual, and there seemed to be something on his mind of more than ordinary importance. Returning just after dusk, he dispatched an orderly to the quarters of the officer who was in attendance. After a preliminary conversation of about a half hour, Washington, gazing upon his companion with a strange look of dignity, which he alone could command, said to the latter, I do not know whether it is owing to the anxiety of my mind or what, but this afternoon, as I was sitting at this very table engaged in preparing a dispatch, something in the apartment seemed to disturb me. Looking up, I beheld, standing opposite me, a singularly beautiful female. So astonished was I, for I had given strict orders not to be disturbed. It was some moments before I found language to inquire the cause of her presence. A second, a third, and even a fourth time did I repeat my question, but received no answer from my mysterious visitor except a slight raising of the eyes. By this time I felt strange sensations spreading through me. I would have risen but the riveted gaze of the being before me rendered volition impossible. I essayed once more to address her, but my tongue had become powerless. Even though itself suddenly became paralyzed, a new influence, mysterious, potent, irresistible, took possession of me. All I could do was to gaze steadily, vacantly, at my unknown visitant. Gradually the surrounding atmosphere seemed as though it became filled with sensations and grew luminous. Everything about me seemed to rarefy the mysterious visitor, herself becoming more airy and yet more distinct to my sight than before. I now began to feel as one dying, or rather to experience the sensations which I had sometimes imagined accompanied dissolution. I did not think, I did not reason, I did not move. All were alike impossible. I was only conscious of gazing fixedly, vacantly, at my companion. Presently, I heard a voice saying, Son of the Republic, look and learn. At the same time, my visitor extended her arm eastward. I now beheld a heavy white vapor at some distance rising fold upon fold. This gradually dissipated and I looked upon a strange scene. Before me lay Europe, Asia, Africa, and America. I saw rolling and tossing between Europe and America the billows of the Atlantic, and between Asia and America lay the Pacific. Son of the Republic, said the same voice as before, look and learn. At that moment I beheld the dark shadowy being like an angel standing, or floating in midair between Europe and America dipping water out of the ocean in the hollow of each hand. He sprinkled some upon America with his right hand, 
while with his left hand he cast some on Europe. Immediately a dark cloud raised from these countries and joined in mid-ocean. For a while it remained stationary and then moved slowly westward until it enveloped America in its murky folds. Sharp flashes of lightning gleamed through it at intervals. And I heard the groans and cries of the American people. A second time the angel dipped water from the ocean and sprinkled it as before. The dark cloud was then drawn back to the ocean. In those heaving billows it sank from view. A third time I heard the mysterious voice saying, Son of the Republic, look and learn. I cast my eyes upon America and beheld villages and towns and cities springing up one after another until the whole land from the Atlantic to the Pacific was dotted with them. Again I heard the mysterious voice saying, Son of the Republic, the end of the century comes. Look and learn. Well, this could be described as the War of 1812. We'll continue with George Washington's visitation of Angel and the vision that he was given in closing out this first section on this, and I will continue with the rest. I want to say, this was a general. This was a general who whose army was losing every battle for seven years but won the war. And this was granted him to see the future of what they had persevered and endured to be a part of bringing forth. You see his description is very similar. Daniel chapter 7 verse 15 and 16. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, in the visions of my head, troubled me. Verse 16. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known and made me know the interpretation of the things. And later we'll see in this that that was George Washington's experience and that the Lord showed him the future of the republic. Notice that the Lord never called America a democracy, but he called it a republic. And you'll see later, he speaks about the union, and he speaks about the republic. Three times or more already, George Washington is called a son of the republic. That's important that we not move the ancient boundary stones. I'll be back in a minute. I want to keep this Short enough to put on YouTube. I'll be right back.